Hi guys, welcome back to Fairy's Tutorials. In today's episode, we're looking at the effects of heat on the composition and structure of carbohydrate foods. Food Science and Technology we're looking at content 11, which has to do with the effects of heat on the composition and structure of carbohydrate foods. Now, let's take a look at the focus points. So in this session, we'll be looking at the different types of carbohydrate foods. What is moist heat versus dry heat as it relates to heat application to food and some key terminologies that are related to the content and finally the effects of dry heat and moist heat on carbohydrate food now let's look at the different types of carbohydrates right so we're looking at the two major categories here which are simple carbohydrates and also complex carbohydrates and as you can see here on your screen some examples of Complex carbohydrates will include foods such as legumes, rice, pasta, those starchy vegetables, those that are harder to break down by our digestive system, right? It takes a longer process for it to break down. Now, whereas with the simple carbohydrates, these are found in foods such as fruits, milk, and vegetables, right? And things such as cakes, candies, etc. Now these carbohydrates are classified as simple carbohydrates because they are easily digested or absorbed into our bodies. All right. So we have the two categories there, complex carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates, right? And the examples of complex may include breads, legumes, rice, pasta, starchy vegetables, and the example of simple carbohydrates will include candies, cakes, fruits, um, other vegetables as well. All right. Now, let's dig a little bit deeper to look at what is moist heat versus uh, dry heat. Right. As we'll be looking at how these types of heat affects or impact different carbohydrates foods all right now moist heat as the name suggests uses what so we're thinking about moisture right so we think of water liquid or steam right so any food that is cooked by using maybe water it may be other liquids such as stocks right it may even be steam right is an example of that too cooking method would be what steaming stewing boiling Right. And as you notice with those, they may use liquid, water or steam. Right. Now, the next category of heat we're looking at is dry heat. Now, as the name suggests, this involves the circulation of air. So no moisture. Right. So dry heat involves the circulation of hot air or may also include direct contact to fat to transfer heat. All right, now quick knowledge check. What are the categories of carbohydrates? If your answer is simple and complex, you are correct. Next question, identify the pictures below by identifying the correct category of carbohydrates. Now guys, which one do you think, which picture do you think depict simple carbohydrates versus complex no if your answer is the milk and the cookies and the honey that you're seeing if those if those are your answers for the simple category you're correct and on the other hand where we have the pastas the bread the pulse those are complex carbohydrates because they take a longer time for them to be broken down no. another question what are the different types of heat that can be applied to food? Right? And we have hint hint, pictures there for hint. Right? So if your answer is dry heat and moist heat, you are correct. All right. Now let us move on to our key terminologies. And we're looking at terms such as 
dextrinization, gelatinization, caramelization, and also crystallization. Good. So the first one we're starting off with is dextrinization, right? Now, dextrinization is a process involving the browning of starch foods when subjected to dry heat. So when we speak of dry heat, think about it. So we're toasting the bread. So we're applying dry heat, right? It may, we may add a little butter, right? As a medium of fat being used, but it is still classified as dry heat because we're not using what? Liquids, we're not using steam or water, right? So dextrinization is a process involving the browning of starch foods when subjected to dry heat. Uh, it is defined as a breakdown of starch into dextrins, right? And dextrin is a type of what? Diasaccharides. Good job. Now, it is a non-enzymic browning and chemical change which is easily digested as partial breakdown is complete, right? The characteristics of of color taste aroma and flavor may change as a result of this process now when you're toasting bread you can smell it right you can smell the toast right awesome now let us look at some practical examples of dextrinization now as we mentioned before in toasting bread and another example too is in baked goods next term gelatinization now, gelatinization refers to the process by which starch granules such as flour or cornstarch swell when heated in the presence of water, right? So right there and then we can identify that gelatinization, gelatinization takes place when moist heat is added. Good. Now, this swelling process causes the starch granules to thicken the liquid in which they are immersed. This is the basis for many gravies and sauces used in cooking, right? And you may also think about those of you who make hot cereals for breakfast. It may be creamy wheat, it may be cornmeal. You notice that when the water is added and heat is applied, then what? The starch grains, they burst open and then the gelatin it genitalized, right? It becomes thick. Good. No practical examples. As we said before, cornmeal porridge, roux, which is the base for sauces, right? So in the case of the roux, it may be the flour that um, gelatinize and thicken the product. If cornstarch is also added, it will also thicken, right? So as an example with the custard, we may add cornstarch to that and that will help thicken the item good so practical examples again are cornmeal porridge roux cheese sauce and custard just to name a few all right now our next term that we're looking at is caramelization caramelization is the chemical reaction in which monosaccharides and disaccharides turn brown with the application of heat no, when we speak of monosaccharides and disaccharides, you know that we're talking about what? The different examples, the different types or forms of carbohydrates, right? So any product containing sugar may caramelize upon heating. Now this occurs when the product containing fruits, honey, milk, sugar cane, and maple syrup good now although not often recognized caramelization is responsible for many browning process and a good example of this browning process is the color of toffee and as you can see there with the picture on your screen you can see that nice brown caramel caramel color right caramelization now practical examples include the browning of biscuits cakes and other baked goods as well our next term that we're looking at is crystallization now what is crystallization how many times have you tried to make some homemade syrup and you notice that crystals form now let us look at the reason for that 
crystallization is the result of the cooling of a supersaturated solution. And when we speak of supersaturated, we're meaning that the, it is very concentrated. So the proportion of sugar to water or to liquid is so much, right? And whenever we boil sugar and water together and allow it to cool, then the crystals will form because the proportion is incorrect. We may have too much sugar in the solution and this will re result in crystals being formed, right? Now the result will occur only at very high concentration levels of sugar. We have explored our key terms, dextrinization, gelatinization, caramelization, and crystallization. And these are the different processes that take place when heat is applied to carbohydrate foods, right? Now we're going to take a look at the effects of dry heat and moist heat on sugars and starch, which are both also carbohydrates. All right? Now, first up, we're looking at sugars. Now, can you tell what happened when dry heat is added to sugar? Or moist heat now let's see what happens now dry heat what happens is the sugar melts and then caramelizes and finally burns leaving a black residue now as it relates to moist heat sugar first dissolves, then become a syrup which caramelizes and initially burns when the water has evaporated good no dry heat the sugar will melt and then caramelize and with the moist heat sugar dissolve and eventually will turn syrup and then caramelize and if further heat is applied it will burn all right now let us look at the effects of dry heat and moist heat on starch what happens to the starch guys now with dry heat starch changes to dextrin which is a process of what seeing that key terms that we looked at coming out no dextrinization right so starch when dry heat is added to starch then it changes to dextrin and an example of this is toast bread now as it relates to moist heat on starch when we're making those porridges those sauces right what will happen starch grain first soften then absorb water and swells causing some to rupture right so when the starch grain ruptures it uh it becomes a st sticky paste right it becomes thick and that is the process of gelatinization all right now let's take a look at some questions number one the carbohydrate found on the crust of toasted bread is starch, dextrin, cellulose, or glycogen. Which is the answer, guys? If your response is dextrin, you are correct. Next question. The process of adding dry heat to sugar to a point where it develops into a dark brown liquid is known as? Is that gelatinization? caramelization, crystallization, or dextrinization? You're correct if your answer is caramelization. Good. Final question. The process of adding moist heat to starch grain will cause what? Which process? Is it gelatinization, caramelization, crystallization or dextrinization now if your answer is gelatinization you are correct right so the process of adding moist heat to starch grain will cause it to gelatinize and to make our nice thick porridges and sauces custard etc right now it is very important for us to understand the concept of these terms as you may on an exam, you may get to define them, or in some cases, they may come in multiple choice where you, where you see like items like these. You're awesome. You've made it to the end of the session. 
please remember to like, subscribe, and also share with persons who you know would find this information useful. Thank you for making it Ferris Tutorials.